So we have to check whether this particular function has a limit when x is equal to 0. So you consider any value of x slightly lesser than 0. So we can take say 0 minus h. So the left hand limit will turn out to be 3 into 0 minus h plus 0 minus h absolute value of that divided by 7 into 0 minus h minus 5 into 0 minus h. h could be any value minus 0 0.00 minus 0 0.0001 or whatever it is. This will now become minus 3h absolute value of 0 minus h is plus h. This will become minus 7h minus 5. So this is absolute value. Minus 5 into h minus 5h. So you will end up getting minus 5 into absolute value of minus h which is going to be plus h. So it is going to be plus 5h minus 7h plus 5h. This will turn out to be minus 2h minus 2h upon minus 2h. 3 into 0 is a mistake. Let's 3 into minus absolute value of 0 minus h is plus h. And 7 into minus h is minus 7h minus 5 to 0 minus h is plus 5h minus 7h plus 5h. It turns out to be 1. Now let's take right hand limit. That means you take limit as x tends to 0 from 0 plus h you tend to 0. So in that case it will become 3 into 0 plus h. So 3 into 0 plus h plus absolute value of 0 plus h divided by 7 into 0 plus h plus minus 5 into absolute value of 0 plus h. So this will give you 3h plus h upon 7h minus 5h which is 4h by 2h which is 2. These two values don't seem to be connected in any way. So whatever be the value of smallest possible value of h, they don't seem to be, they are not at all equal. That means left hand limit is definitely not equal to right hand limit when x is 0. So we say such a limit does not exist. This limit does not exist which also means that the function is discontinuous at x is equal to 1. So this way we can check whether this particular function is continuous or not continuous. So we are just substituting, we look at the value or the variable, consider some value just less than it or more than it, substitute it and you get that the function does not the value of the, the limit of the functions are not one and, one and the same. In such cases, we say the limit does not exist at all. So, in this case, the limit does not exist, right? Further. Okay, now we have a particular question. We have f of x. Is equal to x plus 1 upon root. 6x squared plus 3 plus 3x. Then limit of f of x as x approaches minus 1 and f minus 1. Do they exist or do not exist? Now, if you see directly, if you take, if you simplify this, this turns out to be x plus 1. You can rationalize the denominator and you get root 6x squared plus 3 minus 3x and the denominator will be root 6x squared plus 3 plus 3x into root 6x squared plus 3 minus 3x. This numerator will remain as it is. This will become 6x squared plus root 6x squared plus 3 the whole square minus 3x the whole square that is 9x square 
which will turn out to be x plus 1 into root 6x square plus 3 minus 3x upon 6x square plus 3 minus 9x square. This on simplifying will give you minus 3 into 1 minus x square and the numerator will be 1 plus x into whatever you have. This further simplification will give you 1 plus x into root 6x square plus 3 minus 3x upon minus 3 into 1 minus x square can be written as 1 plus x into 1 minus x with this 1 sorry 1 minus x so 1 minus x will remain as it is 1 plus x gets cancelled and hence you get this so limit now in this case limit as x tends to minus 1 is going to be 6 into minus 1 square that is 6 plus 3 root 9 minus 3 into minus 1 that is plus 3 upon minus 3 into 1 minus minus 1 2 and you end up getting 3 plus 3 6 upon minus 3 you get 6 into 2. This is only plus 3, I'm sorry. So it's going to be 3 into 2, 6, which is 1. So limit as x tends to minus 1 is 1. And f of minus 1 is also going to be the same, which is 1. f of minus 1 is also 1. Limit as x tends to minus 1 is also 1, which means that both limit of f of x and x tends to minus 1 and f of minus 1, both of them exist in such a case. Hence, we exist for this particular value of x. So, we see that the limit of f of x as x approaches minus 1 is 1 and f of minus 1 is also 1, which means that the limit exists and hence f of minus 1 will also exist. If the limit exists, it means that f of minus 1 is going to exist. We are considering only for the value x is minus 1. So, hence both will exist. Right? Okay. Furthermore, limit as x tends to be 1 upon x minus b. So, is say for example, 1 upon x minus b will be b minus b that is 1 upon 0 which is undefined. So, such a limit does not exist and there is no way we can simplify this. Suppose the same question was. As an offshoot, suppose it was x square minus b square upon x minus b. Then this can be written as x minus b into x plus b upon x minus b. This gets cancelled. Now in this case, if you substitute limit of f is going to be nothing but b plus b which is 2b. So suppose the numerator was x square minus b square, the limit would exist. But in this case, it is just 1 upon x minus b, which cannot be. You just have to substitute the value of x as b and you find that it is an indeterminate answer and hence the limit does not exist. So I gave this extra example just to make you understand the difference between the two. Since this is indeterminate, we say that it doesn't exist. Okay. All right. Similarly, limit of 3y plus absolute value of y uh, divided by 7y minus 5 into absolute value of y is, does it exist or does not exist? We have to see. So, we are going to take y from 0 minus. So, we can take uh, 3 into any value less than h plus absolute value of 0 minus h divided by 7 into any value of this minus 5 into absolute value of 0 minus h. This will turn out to be minus 3h plus h h and you have minus 7h plus 5h which will be minus 2h by minus 2h which is 1. So, the left hand limit 
is 1. Suppose we consider the right hand limit that is from greater values, positive values of h you take of y, you can take it as 3 into 0 plus h plus absolute value of 0 plus h divided by 7 into 0 plus h minus 5 into 0 plus h. This turns out to be 3h plus h upon 7h minus 5h which is 4h by 2h which is 2. So the left hand limit and the right hand limit are not at all equal. In such a case this limit for y as y approaches 0 does not exist at all. Hence it does not exist. So we did a similar kind of sum earlier too. Okay. Similarly, you have this limit of x minus 1, the whole square, upon x minus 1 plus x square minus 1. So, does it exist or does not exist when x is 1? Let's further simplify this. This can be simplified. You end up getting x minus 1 plus x square minus 1 is the function. Now, limit of f of x when x tends to 1 is nothing but 1 minus 1 plus 1 square minus 1 which is 0 plus 0 which is very much determinate. So that means the limit of this particular function as x approaches 1 exists and it is equal to 0. It does exist and it is equal to 0. Alright, yes it's true.